Hey guys, hope you guys are all doing well. So I had a request to do a reading for the um, feminine energies that are involved in karmic relationships or it could even be just a situation like a job or even um, a whole career path, all right? Or it could just be something like a family situation, okay? So just take the messages as they resonate for you and if it doesn't resonate for you that's okay it's probably just not your reading just not your situation if you want a personal reading all that information is in the description box and yeah so let's see what we're gonna get here um, also keep in mind that um, sometimes the energies can overlap like you might you, like you might listen to this reading and it might actually resonate with your divine masculine rather than a karmic situation that you feel like you're in that's okay it don't don't define your connections or what you feel to be true in your heart just based off of this reading okay a lot of times there is mirroring and there can be some overlapping energies all right so let's see so what's going on with these feminines these karmic situations. What do you need to know? Ooh, okay. So we have, we got three of these. And I love, I love, I love this deck, by the way. It just, it doesn't have the keywords on, on it, but, but it's a really, really interesting deck. So we have the number 16, um, the number 21, and the number 15. So I actually remember what they are because they're pretty easy. So the number 16 is all about, I can't remember the word exactly that they use in the book, but it's all about taking action. Um, finishing off something that you've started, not being afraid of something new. This is kind of like the full card from the tarot. I might actually pull out the book and, because they're really quick and easy. Um, the description so I might actually do that but not yet all right so this is all about moving forward taking a chance taking a risk uh, being open to new experiences not allowing the past to hold you back so yeah just very general message here and then we have number 21 which is all about if you can see this this is a divine soulmate connection okay which isn't what we're doing the reading about but it's definitely um, related in some way here this is about you actually finding you, coming into union with your own self. I do feel like, yes, there is a divine counterpart out there for you, and that's what this card is trying to say. That's what it's signifying here. But it's also talking about you coming into union with your own self, as I said, finding your own authenticity, connecting with your own heart in order to open that door to this other connection. And last, we have number 15, which is the call. So this is all about, <laughs> uh, you can even see in this image here, it's like, yeah, it's like she's hearing what's going on outside, but she's still staying in this little comfortable um, place that she has created for herself. And in, in the book, it actually says it's like the call is getting louder and louder and louder. And it's all about actually listening to that call. And not just listening, but taking that action. Okay, so let's actually get into the tarot. That's, I might pull some more oracle cards as we go along, but we'll see. Let's get some tarot. Get a little deeper into this. See, so, what do we need to know about these feminines? All right. So, we have the Nine of Wands in reverse, the Seven of Cups in upright, and then the Five of Swords. All right, Femmies. I feel like you are you are in a situation that feels like it's um, it's feeling like you can't push through it anymore. Like I feel like you've tried, okay, with the, the nine of wands, it it's like the wounded soldier who has been through so much, has been to war and, and has been back and has experienced a lot, 
okay, whether it be traumatic or, or not traumatic. I see it as whatever the case, though, it's been something difficult or it's been um, you've put a lot of effort trying to reach some kind of a goal here. But with it being in reverse, it's like you can't you feel like you can't do that anymore. But it's almost like with the Seven of Cups, though, there's still some thoughts here concerning what should you do about this, right? Pop, maybe not seeing the whole situation as clearly as you could. Um, I feel like there are a lot of options and because there are so many options as to how to go about dealing with the situation, you end up being like this five of swords. Um, kind of deceiving your own self, like trying to win in a way where it's actually not serving you in the end. This is almost coming in as possibly even um, distracting yourself. Distracting yourself, which is actually um, kind of like boomeranging boomeranging back at you in a negative way here. Okay, let's see what else. We will also get some guidance. And as usual, the more we go along, I feel like the more messages begin to just really come through. All right, so we have the King of Swords in reverse, the Eight of Pentacles, and Justice. All right, um, you are putting in some effort. I feel like there is something that you're doing, but it's like the way that you're putting in the effort, because the Eight of Pentacles is right under the, the Seven of Cups. It's like you're focused, but I feel like you, you keep distracting yourself with something else, and we are gonna clarify. Um, let see, the King of Swords in reverse, it's like not not taking much action, right? Not being so decisive. And I feel like for some of you, there's a lot of overanalyzing, a lot of, you know, trying to organize everything in your head. Like, how will this be? How will that be? Coming up with all of these scenarios. But that is actually serving as a distraction. It's like putting in the effort, but putting it in in a way where it's actually not not moving you forward as quickly as it could. And that's okay, all right? I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but it's always good to just be aware of what it is that's going on. Because I feel like with the Seven of Cups, you know, some of you are kind of covering that up within, within your own self. But see, that's the thing, like, you know what's right. You want to make that decision here. I feel like with um, Justice showing up upright here, I feel like for most of you that this is resonating with, this... Um, the karma between the two of you is pretty much done and sometimes that can happen where we get stuck like just because um, a karmic cycle has closed and just because you know there has been this balance it doesn't necessarily mean that we let it go it would be in our best interest to most of the time um, but because we have free will sometimes we hold on to it longer and that's because there might be certain things within our own selves that we um, can become aware of, and that's what's going to help. So let's actually clarify some of these. I might clarify um, a couple of those oracle cards as well. So let's clarify this top row. Okay, so we have the <laughs> King of Cups showing up in, in reverse now. Um, the Ace of Cups and the Page of Swords in reverse. Yeah, I feel like your emotions are all over the place, but you're kind of, um, for some of you, you're covering them up. Almost like you've pushed your emotions down to the bottom 
so that you don't have to um, deal with them. I love how we have this Ace of Cups right under right under this Oracle card here because to me this Ace of Cups is also talking about that um, that self love and loving each and every part of your own self. And what I'm getting actually here, together with the Seven of Cups, it's like you're there's this confusion when it comes to when it comes to your emotions and the love that you feel um, for your own self versus the karmic situation or person. So notice how like with the Seven of Cups, right? There's all these cups, right? That I was talking about before as um, options or possibilities or alternatives. And then here in this Ace of Cups, this girl is holding like a whole bunch of dolls that are representing her, her own self. So what this means to me is it's kind of like Feeling like you have given parts of your soul, parts of yourself to this particular situation that you are in. All right, the karmic relationship or the karmic situation, which again, it could be it could be family, right? A family situation, for example. There are parts of you that you feel are attached to that, to that energy. And those might be aspects that you actually love. And this is where it can get confusing because it can feel like moving away from that means that you're losing a part of yourself. And that's actually deceptive. It's not true. You're not losing a part of yourself. You're not losing anything. You're not losing um, anything of significance or anything that really matters you you're not losing anything basically it's like whatever was built there will always be it might just take on a different shape a different form but it will always be it's not it's not being destroyed anything that is destroyed is just an illusion it's just in the 3d it's not Um, I can't think of the word that I want to use, but it's it's not really being destroyed. Essentially, it's not. Okay, so and even with that page of swords being in reverse, this is also about not being able to perceive the situation um, clearly. And I feel like deep down, though, you know, it's just that sometimes you know we can avoid really going deep because that's gonna have to push us. Almost like um, having to find the motivation to really listen to that call. It can be comfortable sometimes to not listen to that call. And I will be pulling some cards to see how this relates to your, um, to your divine soulmate connection as well. Okay, so let's see this bottom row. All right, the Seven of Cups showing up in reverse now, pretty much giving me the same the same type of a message. Um, the Two of Wands and the Three of Wands, which both do talk about procrastination or waiting type of energies. Um, well, let me just start off by saying with this Three of Wands being in reverse here, <laughs> clarifying justice. That to me is a confirmation that karma is pretty much resolved here. I feel like, you know, you're waiting with the three of wands, right? If it's upright, it's like waiting for something to come in. That would be waiting for, for justice, waiting for karma to resolve. Um, for some of you, this could be very literal um, referring to divorce, right? Or breaking some kind of a contract, right? Could be, you know, for work or even um, 
an unwritten contract with family, like a living arrangement, for example. It could be anything. So this would be waiting for that to happen, it, like almost as if it's not ready, right? But it's in reverse. There is no more waiting. There is nothing to wait for. Whatever this situation was, it did not... I feel like part of... Um, part of what might also be blocking you here is the fact that it's not what you expected in the beginning. So when we start off on a journey and, you know, we have these expectations that it's going to be this, this, and this, and then it's not, even though we've pretty much accepted that it's not ever going to be that, it can still be hard to fully release it because we, we feel like, sometimes we can feel like, you know, justice wasn't served because it, we, I didn't get what I expected. And because justice wasn't served, I feel like there's still something here. There's st something is lingering. Something is holding me here. But that's ego. So, and again, parts of this might not resonate for all of you. So, you know, just disregard what you feel is not is not for you. I don't do these readings often, so I feel like there's going to be um, a variety of messages coming in that won't be applicable to every single person watching this. All right, so I am moving in backwards order here, but that's okay. So, Two of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles. See, this is you working towards something, like I said, focusing, putting in effort, but then also kind of not really choosing a path, not really completing it. The Two of Wands, it's all about, um, it could be planning, it could be organizing, it can oftentimes be a crossroads. So it's like you're standing there, you're looking at it, you're focusing on, on these alternatives, possibilities, but not necessarily taking action. And it's like you're feeling stumped. And then again here, I mean, this is just very clear that there are certain things, you know, that when it comes to, you know, everything that you're thinking, they're just serving as distractions. Which is keeping you from being able to follow through. So let's actually... Um, Um, I'm going to pretty much clarify this card up here. Um, just show it to you guys one more time. It's the one where I was saying it could be representative of your divine soulmate connection or um, the divine union within your own self. So let's see, how does this connect to that? All right, we have the Five of Pentacles in reverse, the Four of Wands in reverse, and the Six of Cups. Okay, so I have a couple of messages coming through all at the same time. Um, first of all, there's this sense of abandonment or a fear of abandonment that connects both the the energy that you have towards your karmic situation to your divine counterpart situation. Okay, so what do I mean by that? It's like there's a connection here between the abandonment or rejection that you're feeling from your divine counterpart to the fear of you possibly rejecting or abandoning your karmic situation. All right. Um, and this is creating some kind of a blockage, some kind of an instability energetically between the, you and your divine counterpart here, okay, with the Four of Wands being in reverse. It's like the energy is here with that Six of Cups. See, that's definitely the two of you being connected here. I'm seeing that as there is a mirroring. 
All right, and not only that, I'm saying that also because with this, if you notice this Two of Wands card that was here, um, clarifying the Eight of Pentacles, um, see how there's that mirror there and she's like looking at herself. So I feel like the particular message here is asking you to see how um, something that your divine masculine might be doing is reflective of the way you are handling your karmic situation. I feel like there's, if you really dig deep, you're going to find a lot of similarities. Um, so yeah, let's, let's clarify these. I almost just want to get more, but <laughs> I'll use them as clarifiers. We'll see, because I'm sure they're all going to connect. Alright, so we have Death, the Page of Cups in Reverse, and the Ten of Cups in Reverse. Alright. This, it's like there's a fear of loneliness, a fear of being alone. Um, or a fear of ending this connection, right, or ending this situation because it's going to leave somebody out in the cold. And for a lot of you, especially if your masculine is also involved in a karmic situation, they will be doing the same thing. And I feel like what's happening here is that, you know, the, what you think of your masculine or what your opinions are or what your beliefs are as to what they should be doing or how they should be handling their situation. Look at how those, um, those opinions or those beliefs could actually be applied to your own situation here when it comes to an ending, to a transformation. What are your fears, you know, what it, and what would your response be to that if, if it was your masculine telling you these fears? about a situation in their life. I feel like there's a lot of similar things that are happening and you may or may not be aware of them. It might be two completely different situations, but if you dig deep, you will see that at the root, there is a very common underlying factor that's at play here. Um, this is actually really, really interesting to me. This, again, it's showing up like Page of Cups in Reverse and Ten of Cups in Reverse. It's, it's serving as a blockage, whatever that fear of an abandonment is. And I feel like the message for you here really is to understand that you're not losing anything. You're, and neither is the situation or whoever is involved in your karmic situation. Justice is here. Things have played out. It's really about you just going deep into your your emotions and understanding how this does connect to your divine counterpart. Um, if you, if, I'm pretty sure most of my viewers are involved in divine soulmate connections as well if you're watching this but just in case there's anybody out there watching this who is who does not have a divine counterpart you know just just disregard that part it doesn't matter it this would still be serving as a blockage to you um connecting with a potential divine counterpart or what is meant for you all right it's it's very clear it's very clear. I mean, look at this, the Six of Cups being clarified by the Ten of Cups in reverse, like not having that. Yes, the connection is there. But what you are reflecting to each other is staying in, a, in another arrangement that is less than fulfilling. 
And I feel like that can hold you back in a lot of areas. That can actually hold you back even when it comes to your mission work. That can hold you back when it comes to, um, even if it's not mission work, just opening the door to some other kind of work or something else that you are meant to focus on, whatever your call is. So yeah, you know, let's, um, I, I don't even know if I want to get any more Oracle cards. I actually feel like this was quite a bit. Um, I'm just going to pull a few cards to represent the other side here, which would be, um, the karmic person that you're involved with, the karmic situation, arrangement, job, whatever. Let's just get some cards from that side. Whether it be how it's affecting you or what their energy is, anything that wants to come through. Okay, and we have the Five of Pentacles showing up again here. Let's see if we have enough space here. Let me move these over. All right, Five of Pentacles, Temperance in reverse, and the Queen of Wands in reverse. Okay, yeah, see, so this is, there might be aspects of that situation, okay, or of this person that does feel abandoned, that does feel rejected, or, you know, this is just your fear of that happening. And, You know, this is something that they have, they will have to deal with on their own time and heal for their own selves, okay? And it's almost like, wow, the message that just came through is that by you being in this connection and by you staying where you feel like you don't belong, by you not listening to your call, not moving away from that, not listening to your heart, it's like you're depriving them of their healing, You're depriving them of their healing. And not only that, this is you showing up as this queen of wands in reverse. Um, for some of you, it could definitely be a person who has mistreated you or, you know, who has been, um, just their whole attitude towards you has been as if you are the queen of <laughs> wands in reverse, Me, like as if they don't respect you. In other words, that's not going to be the case for all of you. That's just for some of you. For others of you, this is just the position that you find yourself in because of that. You feel like, this is debilitating you. The fact that you feel like you're leaving this person or that situation out in the cold. But again, that's not the case. You are depriving them of their own healing here because this is something that they are meant to experience. Let's get to see anything else I want to come through about this. Okay, we have just, okay. look at this, we have justice clarifying that five of pentacles, that abandonment. See, this is something that is meant to happen. And I'm not saying that like in a negative way, you know, I don't, I don't wish for anybody to be unhappy or to feel rejected or to feel abandoned. But justice is attached to that. There is a reason for it. There is a karmic um, cycle here. And I feel like, you know, the karma, like the lessons between the two of you, yeah, you know, they may be pretty much done, but it's like this karmic cycle cannot fully close out even for the other person. If you're, if you're still um, attaching to it, if you're resisting your call. And so again, it's like you're depriving them of justice, even if that sounds crazy. But that's, that's what I'm being shown here. Um, I don't remember if I called these out. This is the Six of Cups in reverse. Clarifying Temperance. This, this situation or this person is meant to heal 
the connection to heal the past. And this person is holding on to the past with you. Um, but again, that's, that's not helping to close out the cycle and it's not helping them to resolve their karma. So for those of you who might be um, pitying this other person, or I mean, it doesn't have to be pitying. It could be, you know, just a, um, a structure that you're trying to let go of a career. You know, you've, you've invested a lot in it and you feel like you're just going to leave that out in the cold and therefore also a part of you, as I was saying before. No, it's okay. Even that as an energetic structure or the people attached to that, that is the past. And it's like holding on to, the, to a past that's, that's, you know, no longer in the present though, but living as if it is the present, but it's not the present, it's the past. And that can throw everything out of balance or delay things, right? The timing. And here we have the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. Clarifying the Queen of Wands in reverse. It's keeping both you as well as this other person from being independent, from being self-reliant, um, from abundance. It's keeping you from all of that, you as well as them. Okay, it cannot get any more clear to me than that. So. I'm actually just going to pull a couple of final oracle cards to close this out. Let's see. And if this resonated, please leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, definitely let me know if you'd like me to do more of these or any other topic. Any other topic that some of you might be thinking about that you would like to see a reading on. Please do feel free to let me know and I will see if I can do that. So messages so whoever this may have resonated for all right we have treasure island which is a number nine and this is all about you moving in that direction there is a treasure island that is waiting for you all right it's waiting for you go get it let's get just one or two more. <laughs> Answering the call. The time is now. Need I say more? Open that gate. Walk out of the comfort zone or of, you know, the sadness, the past and move towards that treasure island that you have not been able to fully experience yet. Time is now. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. I thank you so, so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up as well if this resonated and much love.